Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dalrin. In Shadowlands, they introduced a new system to the game for our classes to have a little bit extra diversity between rogues and mages, and that is the Covenant system. Each Covenant comes with two abilities. One of them is going to be a Covenant specific ability, usually some sort of utility, mobility, or a defensive, as well as a class ability that has impactful changes to your rotation and playstyle. Blizzard wants to add more stuff for Covenants, like expanding the Soul Binds in Patch 9.1, adding different types of potency conduits which can enhance aspects of your classes but we're also expecting general tunings buffs and nerfs to covenants in order to make it more of a choice some players feel like they have to play a certain covenant and players naturally gravitate towards a specific playstyle based on their class in this video i want to explore what are the most popular options and choices that players chose for their class in covenant combos why they might have chosen it and some of the things blizzard could do in order to tune it to be more of a choice going into patch 9.1 we are very grateful to have a lot of data collected on what covenants everybody is playing it is fairly accurately tracked as accurately as it can be without blizzard themselves disclosing it exactly what people are playing it's also generally interesting to see the shifts of the meta as people change over time but I think some of the results won't surprise you guys, and some of them actually will. Starting off with Death Knights, we are taking a look at all three specs of Death Knights, and it looks like majority of them lean to, no surprise, it's gonna be Necrolord. It is the covenant that I chose originally for my Death Knight. I felt like it fit very well. I mean, you have a Shadowlands, a Death Knight somewhat themed expansion with this faction of undeads rising from the grave to fight once more. It just felt like Death Knight themed through and through. And with how strong the ability was at the very beginning, it didn't seem like a bad choice. Even though we see a lot of Vanthyr Death Knights doing extremely well at the very, very high end of Mythic Pluses, we even see Carrion Death Knights for Blood DKs doing really well inside of raids for the tankings purposes. So you actually see a lot of different covenants for Death Knights doing really well at the very top end. But they're so popular, Blizzard even added a whole rune forge to the crafting area of the Necrolord Covenant, so you don't have to go all the way back to Arcturus. This is simply because there's just an overwhelming amount of Death Knights as Necrolord. Thematically, Necrolords and Death Knights fit very well together. However, if we are to see players actually trying other covenants, Blizzard would need to do a lot more in order to make the other covenants stronger. The other covenants are not bad. Looking at the data, we again see a lot of Death Knights playing just about anything they want to at every spec at the very high end level. I honestly believe that a lot more players would switch covenants if Blizzard allowed you to take your renown that you collected in one covenant onto the other covenants. So if they added some sort of a system maybe in patch 9.1, we actually could see a lot more players that play DK swap over to other covenants because just about anything is viable. For Death Knights, the two popular choice are going to be based on your spec. If you are a popular tank demon hunter, you're playing the Kyrian. The combo is just way too good, and you even have legendaries and soul binds and conduits that work so well into that playstyle. And if you're playing Havoc, a lot of you guys might guess Nightfae, since we see a lot of Nightfae doing really well. Nightfae PvP Demon Hunters is a thing. Nightfae in Mythic Pluses seems really, really strong. But which one is actually the more popular? It looks like it's actually Venthyr. Venthyr was a very strong choice back during the Alpha and the Beta. This was before Blizzard did any of the buffs and the nerfs. And in most cases, when I see a Demon Hunter, I do see them as either Kyrian, because they're usually not playing Havoc. They're usually playing Vengeance, which is a far more superior spec of that class. Or if they are for some reason a Havoc main, they're usually Night Fae for that big punchy haunt damage. But apparently Venthyr is the most played covenant for Demon Hunters. We've actually recently seen more Demon Hunters popping up when it comes to Mythic Pluses and doing really well with some of the nerfs to, let's say, Monks, for example, that allows other classes to shine or at least be a little bit more closer to competitiveness to Monks. And Demon Hunters was one of those classes that does really well in AoE. And it looks like there's quite a lot of demon hunters in the top ladder that are Venthyr. Even though I hang out in the Venthyr Covenant Hall all the time and I barely see demon hunters, but apparently they are the most popular choice, which I personally find surprising. When you hear the words Druid, do you, just like me, automatically think of balanced Druids that are of the Night Fae variety? Because I feel like every time I say, oh, I have a Druid, it's always a Boomkin and people always expect me to be Night Fae. 
This one doesn't even need a fancy introduction. We all know how many druids play Night Fae. Not only does it fit so well into the theme of a druid, kind of like the Necrolord to the Death Knight, the theme of the druid, be one with the forest, running around like a wild animal in your soul shape form, but also being able to switch forms regularly with an ability that plays the game for you for four seconds on a two minute cooldown and just how strong it is altogether. It just ends up being a really solid combo that all specs of druids can enjoy. When it comes to hunters, there's not a lot of diversity. Majority of them went Night Fae. My guess is during the alpha and the beta, it is really coming down for a lot of the DPS classes to either go Kyrian or Night Fae as those two covenants simmed the best at the time. And with the last minute nerfs to the Kyrian covenant, the Night Fae ended up being a lot stronger. Combined together with how the Serpent legendary with the extra poison effect on aim shots interacted with the Night Fae ability, which Blizzard deemed a bug and then fixed at a later time, it was just a really, really solid combo. A covenant ability that works for AoE as well as single target, where the other ones work only for one or the other. It looks like it still continues to be very popular with Marksman Hunters, even after the nerfs. Maybe potentially in the future, as we get better scaling, we will see other covenants do well for Hunters, as in Sims, they are actually not that far away from the Night Fae. But Night Fae is just really good, a great all-rounder, and Blizzard would really need to do some tune-ups to the other ones to get more people to want to switch. Just like the Hunters, the Mages found themselves together with the Night Fae, but also a lot of the other classes that are triple DPS specs also found themselves playing Night Fae as well. I think it was for very, very similar reasons. As Kirin wasn't all that terrible, the other Covenants at the time just weren't as strong. So majority of Mages, with the cooldown reduction that the Night Fae offered, allowed for a very powerful playstyle, where your combustion was a one minute cooldown, mostly thanks to Battle for Azra systems of Azerite gear and corruptions, to continue flourishing and continue to be a very strong option in the next expansion. Similar thing goes for the RK Mage, it does end up fitting pretty well as a generalized option. But for Frost, we actually saw a lot of them go Venthyr, and they still are predominantly Venthyr. Venthyr just takes away a lot of the RNG of Frost Mages as it allows you the guarantee that you'll get more flurry procs in order to be able to continue your burst and get your setups for big massive crits and it will most likely continue being really really strong. We have a couple of those examples in this video of where two out of three specs go one way while one spec that's an oddball goes the other way altogether and it is very interesting to see that kind of breakdown. To get mages to maybe try something new, I think Blizzard would really need to buff all the covenants. Nightfair 1 I think is way too strong by itself. Soulbinds are amazing, the ability is insanely insanely strong. It's interesting that we see things like Venthyr as well as Frost combo, and I wonder if we'll see something like that in the future, like Necrolord RK Mages, which are starting to become a lot more popular, or maybe even Kyrian Fire Mages becoming a PvE focus. For monks, the Kyrian ended up being very strong, but for monks, the Kyrian was kind of the go-to choice from the get-go, as the ability itself just gave you way too much of a benefit. Crazy amount of mastery, and also gave you a little bit of cooldown reduction with some of your base abilities to heal better, do more damage as a DPS, or to maintain debuffs on the enemies to tank better, it just ended up being a very solid option that didn't receive any kind of nerfs. We do actually see Mystery Monks doing extremely well at the high end with different covenants. Same thing goes for Brewmaster, but not too much movement or variety when it comes to Windwalker. It might be one of those things where eventually with scaling, we'll see a lot more players diving into other covenants and trying different things. But if the scaling doesn't really help out, Blizzard is going to have to do some crazy buffs to the other covenants in order to make them a little bit better. I feel like some of them are very specialized, like for a Windwalker, for example, the Karen just does everything well. But if you were to, let's say, go Windwalker as a Necrolord, you get to do really good AoE damage, but not that much value in single target. So it would have to be a little tidbits like that in order to standardize them a little bit better to, I think, make them more competitive. But again, scaling, I feel like in this case, could potentially improve some of those covenants and class combo. When it comes to Paladins, we all have seen just how strong the vent your Paladin is. You probably have seen the amazing damage that Holy Paladins' Venthyr can perform, basically becoming a 5th DPS, or rather 4th DPS, over Mythic Plus Dungeon, unless Avengers Demon Hunter is your tank. But in that case, you know, you actually have 5 DPS in a group. And the amount of damage and pressure they could put out during that 4 minute button is insane. We've seen Protection Paladins also do really well as Venthyr, and Retribution Paladins have actually brought quite crazy good utility with damage as well as the healing for raid groups it is the go-to that a lot of people at the top end play 
but in fact the most popular covenant for all three specs ends up being Kyrian. Which is a little bit surprising because you see so many Venthyr Paladins of all three specs performing so well at the high end with certain Retribution Paladins doing really well in Mythic Pluses as Kyrian, not including PvP of course. But it looks like the Kyrian combo is just that good. I think it's one of those cases where the theme of the Kyrian and the playstyle of the Paladin, the theme of the Paladin, is very similar setup to the Night Fade Druid and the Necrolord Death Knight. A lot of players saw the Wings back piece and the Angelic Kyrian flying in the sky and they thought, you know what, I'm gonna follow Uther and become a Paladin as a Kyrian. But also the Kyrian playstyle gives you an extra button to use pretty regularly. It's not quite the Venthyr 4 minute cooldown, which is like waiting for a metamorphosis for the Paladin or a massive metamorphosized version of a Consecration on the ground for a Paladin. It's something you get to use pretty regularly and it will sim in pretty well. And players were recommending that if you're going to be going for an all-rounder for Mythic Pluses, maybe PvP, maybe raiding, it could be not a terrible choice. But we saw just how strong Venthyr is, but apparently majority of players still play Kyrian, which I personally find a little bit surprising. I do think just like the uh, Death Knights, if Blizzard were to allow players to transfer the Renown over, I think you would see a lot more players spread out between Venthyr and Kyrian. And I really do think the Blizzard maybe should take a look at Night Fae as well as Necrolord a little bit more because they're really underperforming when it comes to the population numbers and maybe those abilities should be taken a look at again. When it comes to rogues right now, we actually see a lot of rogues doing exceptionally well. As a Necrolord outlaw, the strongest, the most successful choice for Mythic Pluses, the Venthyr assassination rogue is incredibly good in raids, but this was only because of recent buffs in patch 905. Predominantly, a lot of the rogues were recommended with guides to go Night Fae from the start of the expansion. It makes sense, it's a safe choice, and you would want to choose the best option where you can play all three specs and not be terrible in your content, because at the time, at the beginning of the expansion, a lot of players were literally afraid of not being invited to groups because they were the wrong covenant. But for rogues, the playstyle itself was so minor in terms of what the abilities brought that you really could push and do really well as any covenant. And now, with the changes in 905, I think a lot more rogues would want to go and change the covenants. I regularly get viewers coming into the channel asking me, hey, you no, know, if I were to change covenant, what do I keep, what do I not keep? And regrinding all the renown to a lot of people just doesn't sound like a lot of fun. Just like Paladins as well as Death Knights, I feel like if Blizzard were to allow some kind of a renown transfer of some sort, so players don't have to regrind through all the renown, maybe with patch 9.1, you would see a lot more rogues being a lot more spread out in covenants because all of them are actually very, very close to one another in effectiveness. But we'll probably see a lot more Necrolords since a lot of people like to do dungeons, a lot more Venthyr since a lot of people wanted to play Assassination for the longest time, but you'll still see plenty of Fae and Kyrian. And I feel like out of all the classes, this one could have probably the best spread. When it comes to Shamans, the Necrolord and the Venthyr are the two options. The Venthyr, if you're playing Enhancement, or at least that's how it started, where we are actually seeing a quite a few Enhancement Shamans rolling all the Covenants. In Sims, they're doing really good. In practice, they can even do fantastic not playing Venthyr. It was just kind of the safe choice that a lot of people recommended in guides at the beginning of the Alpha and the Beta. Then, for Ellie and Restoration, we got Primordial Wave from the Necrolords, which that won't make sense. More Flame Shocks, which means you can maintain your dots and get more Lava Bursts as Elemental, or more Riptides for easier healing, which was a very Glimmer-like playstyle. You basically will put up Riptide on a bunch of allies, and then your next heal would heal everybody that had a Riptide. So it had this like, put a buff on allies, and then when you heal, all those allies with the buff also gain a portion or the full benefit of the heal, which ended up just being super fantastic for the beginning of the raid. However, with the buffs in patch 905, there's a lot more room to play as different covenants for shamans, but I feel like as just like rogues, for example, just like death knights and paladins, there's just so many players that are just got all that renown into that one covenant. And even if then, it would be quite a bit to convince other people to try something new, since the Necrolord and the Venthyr for Enhancement in particular have just proven themselves to be so good overall. You would have to have some quite significant buffs and maybe Renown swap in order to get more players to try other Covenants. Warlocks are actually a very interesting case. I didn't start out Shadowlands as a Warlock. I primarily focused on my Rogue and getting a couple ults up and running. But primarily I spent a good portion of my gameplay playing my main and enjoying what my main is all about. So I didn't notice this, but apparently Warlocks at the very beginning of the expansion had a lot of diversity. 
There was warlocks of all kinds of covenants depending on your spec. Affliction warlocks from the get-go went Night Fae because it gave you an extra damage over time ability like a lot of the other abilities, but this one was easier to use and could be spread to multiple enemies very easily. Affliction warlocks have an ability that punishes the enemy for every damage over time that's on them, so if you have one enemy loaded with dots or multiple enemies with as many dots as you can maintain, then you'll have quite a lot of damage going out in general. Destruction Warlocks actually were really in a swing of a little bit of Kyrian, a little bit of Necrolord, a little bit of Venthyr, a little bit of Night Fate. They were all across the board at the beginning of expansion. For Demonology Warlocks, some were in the Night Fate, some were in the Necrolord, a little bit in other Covenants too, but you really did see that almost 50-50 split down the Necrolord and the Night Fate Covenant. But right before the raid started, you saw a massive shift with almost 80% of the Warlocks going Night Fae, abandoning all their Covenants that they really wanted to play, and all going Fae. Fae makes all the sense. You have a class with not a lot of mobility. Given extra mobility, it becomes a lot better and easier to play. The Night Fae Covenant works really well for all three specs, so you can switch out from spec to spec depending on the fights as you're progressing through raids or getting through dungeons. So, because it just seems like a good all-rounder, a lot of guides started recommending right before the raid came out to go Night Fae. As at the beginning, nobody really knew what Warlocks were going to play, but Venthyr was kind of hinted at. It made sense, it was pretty easy to play, but wasn't super interesting. But now that we are in patch 9 to 5, there have been significant buffs to the other covenants and we are seeing people starting to kind of spread out. But again, I think they would need to do some massive buffs to the covenants themselves before we really see a lot of people swap. You do have a class that's super immobile like a warlock and with the mobility of night fate you gain quite an advantage you normally don't have. If they can somehow make the other abilities, the class themselves abilities, a little bit stronger, maybe give them a little bit extra aspect besides just extra damage, maybe some kind of a proc based thing or cooldown reduction aspect, then that would convince more people to want to try other covenants. But right now, it looks like the Night Fae for the most part have the Warlocks in their grasp. And finally, the Warriors. It looks like it is still, even though Blizzard has done so many buffs to the other covenants of Warriors, we are still seeing majority of DPS go on Venthyr and majority of tanks stay in Kyrian. There have been massive updates in terms of Warriors and Covenants. And right now, Night Fae Warrior is downright the best in terms of Mythic Plus damage output. Actually, the strongest Covenant that's recommended by a lot of players. Even though Night Fae Warriors have massive success and actually not too terrible in raids, actually have had some massive success in PvP as well, the Venthyr still reigns supreme, but your player is going for the big Condemn button. It makes sense. It works out for the Arms Warrior super well, an ability that allows you quite a bit of play, and for Fury also generates you quite a bit of damage, quite a bit of easy rage in the opener, and it's a button you get to press regularly. Then we have the Kyrian Prot, which also is pretty good. The Spear of Bastion can be used to root enemies to keep them away from you, and the Kyrian come also with the Sippy Cup, which can be good whenever you have a bunch of dots on you, or trying to simply give yourself a bit of a heal, being a warrior who can't really heal yourself. I think it's going to be a little bit of time before we see warriors really branching out to other covenants. And potentially with a renowned swap of some sort, you could see a lot more players go in different covenants as the Necrolord banner is actually a massive tool for group content, especially if you're a protection warrior the high end. Night Fae is extremely potent right now, but I think Blizzard would have to do something more for the protection vent your playstyle, maybe give them more of a defensive benefits. And the Kyrian for Arms and Fury, outside of PvP uses, I think they would need to do something in order to make it more enticing for the DPS counterparts of the Warriors to even give Kyrian a go. Over the last patch, Blizzard has done a lot of good things in order to buff up the Covenants. And while we do have certain combos that are really, really strong, it doesn't reflect the overall popularity of how many people chose a certain Covenant. Right now we're seeing, like for example with Rogues, far more Outlaw Rogues performing incredibly well at Mythic Pluses as a Necrolord. And Assassination and Venthyr seems like it goes hand in hand. However, a massive plurality of players are Night Fae. Do they want to play Night Fae? That's potentially there. But also, regrinding all the Renown isn't always fun for players. Especially if you just want to kind of log in the game, have some fun, get your keys done. The Covenants that are in currently are pretty serviceable. It Blizzard somehow allowed maybe some kind of a Covenant Swap Forgiveness system of patch 9.1, maybe to allow you once for your character, if you want to make a choice of a Covenant you want to, make a swap with all your renown transferred over to the Covenant, or maybe copy it over in some way. 
then I think we'll have pretty massive shifts in terms of what Covenant's players will end up actually playing as there are some very strong options that can formed recently but having to regrind all that all over again might not really seem up some players alley then there are some covenants that are simply not as strong and blizzard definitely needs to do some work on those i think the best idea here is not to nerf the covenants that are doing really well i think the best idea rather is to buff the ones that are, are not performing as well but maybe also find ways to make them enticing for the specs that are not really taking that covenant for the purpose like warriors and damage warriors protection likes kyrian the damage warriors don't really like kyrian that much so if you end up playing Kyrian Warrior, you're most likely playing Prot in or maybe PvPing as Arms of Fury. You're not really going to be doing dungeons as a Fury Warrior with Kyrian or Arms Warrior as Kyrian. And if you end up going Venthyr, you're probably not really going to be diving too much into Prot. So doing things, except for just, you know, numbers themselves, just raw extra damage increases on X ability or Y ability. If they added some kind of an extra benefit that Arms Warriors or Fury Warriors could see, from the Spear of Bastion of Kyrian, then maybe they can convince more Fury Warriors and Arms Warriors to consider, strongly consider, the Kyrian as a possible choice. But they would have to add some kind of extra abilities or passives or doodads or maybe procs for maybe extra resources or something in order to get more players to really want to give it a try. But Blizzard has done a pretty decent job so far. More iterations in the future with the gear scaling that we'll be getting most likely is going to go a pretty long way. But anyway, that's going to be a pretty long video. Take a look at all the different popularities between classes and covenants. And this was actually very fun to explore for me just to see the differences. Some of the stuff I expected, some of the stuff I didn't. And there are definitely some things that Blizzard can do in order to give it more of a choice for players between which covenants they really truly want to play. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. I really do hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Which covenants did you think were getting popular? Which ones should be more popular? And what could Blizzard do with some of the covenants to make you want to try it? For example, if you're a warlock and you always wanted to try the Kyrian playstyle, but you just never really could do it, what could Blizzard do to make you want to really go the covenant you truly want to play? Thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope you guys enjoyed. You let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, I'll see all of you guys in another video.